uh, a set theoretic function set function which takes each point in f which is basically a set to 0 1 such that the probability of the entire set is 1 you take any disjoint sets the probability of the union will be the sum uh so this can also this also has an interpretation or a similar to area and volume and uh, um if you look at that in its generality that is called measure theory which we will not get into so then we saw some of the consequences probability of null set is one probability of the uh of a set, complement of a set is one minus the probability we saw the proof uh we also saw a chain of uh, events a1 a2 etc one is contained in the other then probability of intersection is equal to the limit of the probabilities and similarly we also looked at uh, a1 contained in a2 and so on uh, and um, of course uh, this is something that um, um, we didn't look at so let me write that here so probability of um, let's say um, union for all i equal to 1 to infinity ai is equal to limit uh n tending to infinity let's say an oh sorry probability of an right this is uh intuitive so um, let's look at one of them today and see why this is the case maybe uh, i'll just go to the next lecture so maybe let's not have conditional probability as this heading so let's continue with this okay so what do we have uh, if you look at uh, the other it's a1 uh, so let's look at this right a1 contained in a2 contained in n so on okay a1 contained in a2 contained in n so on uh, then probability of union ai is equal to limit n tending to infinity probability of an right this is what we have uh, uh, do you know what is uh, uh, how do you prove this a1 contained in a2 so for example a1 is this a2 is this a3 is this and so on right um what you are looking at is the union so it should be the uh, limit right so how do you uh, prove this any idea yes i think we have missed uh, chandra so did uh, i don't know if uh, the mail has gone to uh, uh, chandramani so uh, anyway so let's not uh, worry so how do you prove this the union is the limit what is the idea what is the idea behind the proof well um you can either convert this into intersection and then prove it or you can also do uh, uh, the other thing which is uh, um, so let's let's look at that right so i can write this as 1 minus probability of intersection of this event which uh, sorry complement of this event which is a i complement which is the limit n tending to infinity well it's again 1 minus probability of a n complement right but if you look at a1 complement well that is the uh, the contained in will be reversed right if a1 is contained in a2 if a1 is contained in a2 a1 complement would be this that is contained in a, uh, so a2 complement will be contained in a3 a1 complement and so on right this is what we have so essentially both are related so let me let's look at the other one right so therefore if i prove i'm sorry there is some issue ah. so therefore if i look at this this suffices right so instead of a1 contained in a2 i'll look at a1 contain contains a2 contains and so on probability of intersection i equal to 1 to infinity ai is nothing but limit n tending to infinity probability of a n now how do you prove this how do you prove this any idea hmm? question 
how do you prove this any idea hmm? hello can you guys hear me yes sir yes sir hello sir okay ha sir can you hear me sir yes i can hear you uh, uh, any idea can how sir, the network it? is sir. okay sir let me see okay so uh, do you see the screen now so how yes, do you sir. prove this any idea on how to prove this yes any idea hmm hmm okay so um maybe i'll i'll get back to this so this requires some um uh, so essentially what you have to do is write okay so i'll give you the hint uh, pictorially you can uh, uh, write this further so what is this a2 is contained in a1 right so basically a1 is the big set right a2 is the next set right and so on right i'm saying uh, the probability of the intersection would be the last one right roughly intuitively right so um, but if you want to use some of the existing whatever the properties of probability and prove this essentially what you have to do is somehow write this as some sort of a disjoint sets right i can write the intersection um, as some sort of um, um, so essentially i have to somehow write this the reach here right so the question is how do you go from let's say the bigger set to all the way to the last uh, one right that will be the question so i'll we will come back to this but for now you can just assume that this is uh, a fact okay is this fine is this fine yes sir yes sir okay yes sir. so uh, we will revisit this uh, again okay so now um, for example uh, let's look at another uh, thing so this may be a simple lemma or something which is very uh, important it's called the union bound so for any for any sequence of events sequence of events let's say a1 a2 etc of course all of them belongs to sigma algebra probability of union i equal to 1 to infinity ai is less than or equal to summation i equal to 1 to infinity probability of yeah so how do you prove this see these are not disjoint events if they are disjoint then the axiom says it should be exactly equal to the sum of the probabilities but these need not be disjoint so how do you prove this so let's Sir, prove uh, for two okay so we can yes. do this by induction method yeah so uh, let's look at uh, consider uh, two sets right to consider a1 and a2 okay so uh, and let's look at this right so a1 union a2 let's prove it for two now so what is this this is basically uh, i can write this as probability of a1 plus probability of a2 minus probability of a1 intersection a2 uh, everyone knows this right and uh, how do you prove this and all that so everybody knows this yes sir yes sir no yes okay so uh, so we will use this so basically this probability is always greater than or equal to 0 some you are basically subtracting a positive quantity so if you leave that out it will be probability of a1 plus probability of a2 right now you can prove it for any finite right so uh, by induction um probability of 
union i equal to let's say 1 to m ai is less than or equal to i equal to 1 to m probability of a right by induction this is true for every m so i can take the take the limit right right this is the overall uh, proof is this fine it's okay right okay so this is some elementary thing it's called union bound so where is it used uh, for example uh, often times uh, certain events can be written as unions but computing that that probability of the union is very difficult but computing probability of individual will be is pretty easy so you just apply union bound and write for example probability of error right so error um, you know typically will be union of several events simple events but those events need not be disjoint so in which case it becomes hard to compute the probability of error so what you do is you just upper bound it by the sum and you know how to compute this individual's probability of error that's the idea okay so let's look at uh, um, conditional probability now so sir one, one question is there sir correct hello yes go ahead go ahead please yes sir suppose we are taking the limit now so after taking uh, the limit this summation will become infinite series no uh, sir ah uh, so, so uh, how can uh, we conclude about its convergence and something so it need not so first of all uh, um uh, th this probability so it's the sum of uh, positive quantities right so yeah, it can yeah. go to infinity for yes sir. it can go to infinity right whereas yeah. uh, if you look at this limit right this limit cannot go to infinity yeah. it can be at most one so trivially it it satisfies yeah. right so it doesn't matter the only issue would be if mm -hmm. these probabilities were uh, positive or negative right so if these terms were like then it could diverge to uh, well it need not even converge not even to infinity mm. okay okay sir yeah okay so uh, let's look at uh, the notion of uh, um, so by the way uh, i think one other thing that i didn't mention so for example the limit if i take limit inside outside right so uh, maybe and I'll, i'll put that as an aside i don't know where to write uh maybe i'll write it here okay so basically uh, you have uh, this limit so it will be limit n tending to infinity probability of union i equal to 1 to n ai right but this it turns out to be equal to union or i equal to 1 to infinity ai okay why is that that follows from so if you look at um, let me write it here again so if you look at a1 union a2 union etc am so this is contained in a1 union a2 union etc union am union am plus 1 so now this is like you can consider this set as b b m this set as bm plus 1 so and then apply this thing whatever we proved earlier right so this this particular thing one is contained in the other so this so this is nothing but the limit okay so you should apply this and therefore um this limit here limit of probability of union till n is equal to probability union till infinity yeah okay that's how you get it okay so let's look at conditional probability so uh, let's start with the definition of conditional probability okay so now uh, you take any two events so for uh, for a and b belonging to f by the way in all of these right so we are uh, basically saying you know we have a sample space we have a sigma algebra and you have defined a probability on this so this is assumed throughout then you say you have two events that is a and b belonging to f okay uh, then the conditional probability of a given b is given by 
okay so this is the notation probability of a given b this is how i am going to define probability of a intersection b divided by probability of b of course this is defined only when probability of b uh, greater than zero if it is zero it's undefined okay so you cannot condition on an event that will never occur right it doesn't make sense we are asking what is the probability that uh, sorry what is the probability that it rains in let's say darwad uh, given um, the earth vanishes right so it doesn't make sense okay so uh, where do you get this from uh, so the intuition is for example if you look at probability of a so how do you compute uh, an estimate of this well you just count the number of times a occurs in a, in a sequence of experiment if you do the experiment n times you look at the relative frequency right now what is probability of a given b well uh, you just conduct the experiment count the number of times a occurs okay but you are conditioning on b so whenever a and b both occurs you count the number of times it you know a and b both occur divide by you should look at only the cases when b occurs right so that is the relative frequency so it's n a into section b divided by n, uh, n b but you would have conducted the experiment n times so this is n a into section b divided by n which is roughly probability of a into section b and this is where the definition comes from okay um, can somebody give an example of uh, um um conditional probability where is it used and what uh, what would be the uh, uh, reason why one should study conditional probability anyone in itc sir what what itc information theory and coding no where is it used in channel oh, coding used in something but uh, huh channel channel coding channel coding uh? why do you need huh. pro conditional so probability, probability of error probability of ch channel matrix uh, like mutual information what is that no i mean that is like a very superficial uh, hand waving thing right so you should be very specific at the receiver at the receiver to estimate the error at the receiving end sir like when we transmit data uh -huh. we use yeah. conditional probability so like we zero transmitted and we uh, get one so maybe Probability. The one is transmitted given. One is received given. Zero is transmitted. So in that cases, maximum okay. likelihood and. Uh, okay. A posterior. Okay. So okay. Um, okay. So can somebody give a very concrete example of conditional probability? Okay. Let me put it this way. Suppose I have two events. Okay. And these two events are disjoint. that is uh, if a and uh, um, uh, b are disjoint what can you say about probability of a given b can somebody tell me zero Ayush? zero why is that so one occurs the other does not occur they are both dependent disjoint ha uh, this joint um, even so, though it occurs okay. it does not occur uh -huh. so okay so a intersection b is zero yeah okay i can give you one example so let's say um this is a very toy example so uh let's say you have a hard disk and you are writing sequence of zeros and ones to it okay Okay, that's how you uh, suppose you say copy paste uh, something to your pen drive. This is what happens, right? So now let's assume that if you write a one, suppose you have one here, and you write a one, um, this one uh, gets written with probability, let's say one given one, right? So the probability that one gets written given that you wrote one, right? Or you know there is a possibility that zero gets written when one was uh, written right so this is the probability that zero gets written when one was written, given one was written and similarly for zero right so you can have this these are all conditional probability one given zero is that uh, is this example uh, fine um, everyone uh, yes sir it's very general right 
how about Sumit? Yeah, sir. It's okay. It's fine, right? Hey, yeah. uh, Savan, did you email uh, Chandramani? So he's supposed yeah. to join, right? Yes, sir. I'll call him or something. I'll email him again and see. He's not here. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, email him. Huh? Remind him. Yeah, Jayant, you were saying something. No, sir. Nothing. Okay, fine. So um, this is one example where you uh, use conditional probability. Now, uh, the question would be, you know, suppose you read uh, uh, the data from your pen drive, you'll get like sequence of one, zero, one, one, et cetera. Now you should see, well, this is what I have, uh, what got written, but what was actually written, right? So this is the question. So this is, when you read it back, this is the problem that you should solve. What was actually written given that I have observed that something is written, right? Anyway, so this is con about conditional uh, probability. So remember one thing. So this is an important note. Uh, if A and B, A intersection B is null, probability of A given B or B given A, okay? Both are zero, okay? Keep this in mind, okay? Huh. So now uh, let's look at another uh, important uh, thing. So uh, this is again, uh, suppose you have a sequence of events. Um, what can you say about uh, um, this thing? Okay, so event i equal to one to, uh, let's say infinity ai, suppose given b, right? Uh, assume that ais are disjoint. What can you say about this? How do you write this? Hmm? Well, the claim is, this is something that you can write. Probability of AI given B. So this right? will also be zero. No, no, no. So it's not, AI is not disjoint with respect to B. AIs are disjoint. That is, AI intersection AJ is equal to null for all i not equal to j that's what it means right you take any two pairs they are disjoint okay but a i intersection b need not be null okay it's conditional right okay now how do you prove this can somebody tell me the proof so probability of union or all a i a i given b is equal to well i'll apply the definition right so overall i a i intersection b divided by probability of b can somebody uh, complete the proof now complete the proof sir we can write this as probability of a1 intersection b plus probability of a2 intersection b and so on uh, why is that how and can you write that way sir because a all ais are disjoint so hmm. uh, that we can write that. that's correct right so now i can write this as uh, this is uh, the de morgan's right whatever um, is basic set theory so this i can write it this way divide by probability of b now uh, ai intersection b's are disjoint so this implies by axiom this is 1 to infinity probability of ai intersection b of course you have divided by b so this completes the proof right fine this is an easy proof right okay uh, now uh, there is this notion of independence of course these are some of the things that you would have already studied in your undergrad i'll just quickly go through so we say that two events whenever i say events it should belong to the sigma algebra two events a and b are independent if probability of a given b is probability of b it makes sense right so 
for example conditioning on some event the chances of a occurring can change right if it if nothing so for example oh, um, yes, probability of a yeah you're right right so if a given b uh, given b b the event b does not impact the event probability of event a then uh, we say that this is independent right so uh, this, of course uh, this requires probability of b to be uh, greater than 0 so i can just write it like this right what is the definition of a given b it's a intersection b divided by probability of b i'll take it to the other side so it will be probability of a and probability of b okay so you have two events uh, the intersection of two would be the equal to the product um any any question so far no okay so how do you generalize this for example uh, you have n events right the events let's say a1 a2 etc an you have n events are statistically independent well uh, there is independence even in uh, linear algebra so statistically independent if so how do i define this if for any set s which is a subset of 1 2 3 n probability of i'll take intersection over all those set s ai this is equal to the product over all subset probability of n is this fine so sumit uh, since you have uh, taken um, or have read measure theory a little so can you mm -hmm. just tell me what is it uh, resembles this this resembles something right probability of a intersection b is probability of a n times probability of b product what does it resemble intersection b on this hmm no sir i am not getting this um what is the, what is your question do you have any question or no sir no ha huh. so uh, uh, so probability of a is a measure right so in other words you are measuring the size of something probability yes, of b yes. is also some measure right you are taking yeah. the product of the two uh, so can you think of something i mean so for example uh, when you studied lebesgue measure you have length right length is your measure length of yeah. intervals and mm -hmm. i can also do the same thing in the y axis right yes. now how did we extend it to a product measure so basically you took the square or the rectangle uh, and said a b right so the product is what we are looking at so independence is analogous to that okay so for mm -hmm. those um, who are not familiar with this don't worry so just this is this is an uh, aside okay so now uh, it is um, basically you know often times convenient for us to uh, repeat the experiments uh, n times and uh, look at the probability of uh, n experiments um, it's called uh, the cartesian product of uh, n experiments and we uh, there is this notion of iid uh, so essentially if you have if you conduct the experiment n times um, each event oc occurring is independent of the other then we say that it's independent um if the probability of those events are also the same it doesn't change with time or uh, with the experiment we call it as identical okay so we will uh, come back to this um, you know often we'll uh, for now just hold on to the i mean just just ignore that okay so let's look at the next notion which is the notion of random variables so what is a random variable anybody It's a function. You have studied, huh? It's a function which maps uh, sample space to uh, R. R. Okay. Is that enough? Mm. So we indicated uh, uh, integer value, uh, like. Uh... No, not necessary. Not necessary, right? So if you rotate a disk, the outcome is zero to two pi. I can map it again to zero to two pi, right? So a random variable need not be that integer. right 
so any anyone so why why one should go for random variables any idea yes ayush you want to say something sir uh, it should be defined in the probability space also what should be defined in the probability space random random that that the fun, random variable so oh, can you be more precise so like uh, like uh, according to the definition the definition says that measurable the function is defined in the probability space and maps the sample space to real numbers like we should be able to assign probability to it probability is to what to the random variables um no i don't know how to assign probabilities to random variables i know how to assign probabilities for events right yeah, yeah. that means you give me give me any point in f the sigma algebra i can assign a probability right okay. sumit you wanted to say something you were saying something yeah sir i am also saying that it is just a function mm -hmm. from the sample space to the set of real numbers and okay. exactly okay so let me define this uh, precisely so um of course um, you need again i'll go back to this you need at least these two so a random variable i'll call rv for start is a map as you said so it's a map from where to where it goes from omega to r such that uh you look at so it's a map right so you are going to look at each sample point and assign a number to it but what you are going to do is you look at all the outcomes which gets mapped to a number smaller than some number a so look at this set right what are these basically it's a collection of outcomes which got mapped to a number less than or equal to a so you look at this set this set should belong to f then we say that this is a random variable is this fine so this a is arbitrary you know so we can take any fine? a ah so, so oh yeah this is true that, that's correct for every a in r you take any a this should be true for example if you take a equal to infinity what will be the set if a is equal to so infinity Entire real line, huh? Yeah. Entire real line. No, right? I am. Um, let's say I am tossing a coin. The outcomes are head, tail. Head is one, and tail is zero. That is my random variable. So, mm -hmm. where do you get the entire real line? So, what is omega now? Can somebody tell me what will it be this? If you have an experiment with sample space omega and some sigma algebra f, so you have this. So, what will be this when a is infinity? Okay, let's look at a concrete example, maybe. So, uh, let's look at this example. Sample space. Hmm? What is that? Really, whole sample space, I think, sir. Whole sample space. Okay, let's see. Okay, so let's look at this head tail. Very simple example, right? And x of head is one, x of tail is zero. So this is your um, random variable, right? Now. uh what i am saying is the set of all omega in omega such that x of omega is less than or equal to infinity now let's see what are the possible omegas you have only two right head or tail mm -hmm. right for example we will check whether head belongs to this so x of head is what 1 1 mm -hmm. is less than or equal to infinity therefore head belongs to this what mm -hmm. about tail x of tail is 0 0 is less than or equal to infinity therefore It belongs to this so this is entire omega right as sumit says mm -hmm. now is it true in general see sam random variable should map every sample points to some real numbers right mm -hmm. so no real numbers can be less than so greater than infinity right it has to be less than or equal to infinity do you agree so that yes. means if i take a to be infinity all the sample points should be there in the set therefore omega is uh, definitely a part of it do you agree what what happens if i take a equal to minus infinity someone else can answer nitish can you tell me the answer nitish 
if a is minus infinity what will be your uh, that set zero minus infinity to zero what zero no, a a is minus infinity then what will be the answer <clears throat> Hmm? Yeah, below. Yeah, you can just. Uh... Oh, sorry. Yes. You just think no. So if a is minus infinity, you should look at all those outcomes, sample points which get which got mapped to a number less than minus infinity. Is it possible? Yeah. Hmm. Not possible. Which outcome got not... mapped to a number less than infinity, minus infinity? Nothing, right? Nothing, not not. No sample point got. So that means that set has nothing. What what does that mean? Well, I have been very crude here. So it's a null set, right? So on the one hand you have uh, so in the same example, on the one hand you have the entire set, on the other hand you have null set. So let's look at another thing. So set of all omega says that x of omega is less than half. What will be this? Can somebody tell me? This is some trivial things, but uh, I just want you guys to be familiar. Yeah. On what will be this? Tail, tail, huh? Tail, right? Because head will give me one. One is not less than I could half. Therefore, head is not there. Tail will be there. Okay, is this fine? now obviously the question would be why would anyone want to uh, ha have this kind of a definition right so why should x is a so first of all there are two parts to it x is a map from omega to r why do you need to even think about mapping right because every event i can assign a probability right so i just go ahead with this why why do you need a, a random variable or the notion of a random variable in probability for example in measure theory they don't care i mean it's a very general function called measurable function they don't care about uh, the specific thing so um, naturally you know you need to look at functions so fine but in, in in probability why are you even mapping that and you are complicating this right so what is the purpose sir we can't represent all the events oh. meaning mm -hmm. if the sample if 2 to the power of omega It uh -huh. is large. We we can't represent each and every event, sir. So we can map to the map to the so real number. Right? Any events yeah. can have equal probabilities. So distinguish between them, maybe. Fine. I mean, they let it have equal probability. So that's perfectly fine, right? Do you agree? So. um the reason is the following right so anyone else nitish ayush sumit or uh, praveen wants to pitch in and say something about this why do you need a random variable sir actually we are just distributing the sample space with the the help of some real numbers so no you are just mapping so you are just saying head i will call it as 1 and tail as 0 that's all you are doing so why yes, do you so want to do that we are relating we are just yeah, correct we are just relating so why is that right we can just work with head tail right so what is the issue so probability of head is p probability of tail is 1 minus p fine i mean we are very happy to be right okay. yeah so uh, the reason uh, there are two reasons one is of course uh, it's always better to work with it is easier to work with numbers because you can add subtract do lot of arithmetic the main reason is of course uh, if you are dealing with for example head tail uh, you have two outcomes head and tail and you can map head to one tail to zero and then work the entire thing right so even if you don't map you can still work with it but there could be another experiment whose outcome is let's say weather is good weather is bad okay these are the possible uh, events i am just interested in these two then uh, again i have to work with probability of uh, weather being good probability of weather being bad and all that right so instead you just do the following regardless of what the underlying experiment is you just map those outcomes to numbers the moment you do that you just look at those numbers rather than the underlying experiment right you can abstract that out and come up with one textbook 
which studies random variables not really the underlying experiment right you don't need to specify the experiment again and again and again okay that's one of the reasons why uh, why you want to go for um, uh, random variables so uh, we will come back to this thing so why do you need this definition uh, of random variables we'll come back later on okay so just hold on to that okay so now um, if you consider for example an experiment where you have this disk and uh, you you are you are randomly rotating this and this is the reference and you are finding the angle right the angle is random and you have to find uh, uh, the chances here so everything is random here right so omega is what 0 to 2 pi if i ask well what is the random variable here x of omega is omega itself that will be my random variable okay i don't want to do it's already a number so i'll just keep it as it is so now in this case uh, if i ask what is the probability that the outcome omega is some 3 pi by 4 the answer is what zero zero right there is no so this is not the relevant question to ask the question to ask here is i can ask what is the probability that omega belongs to for example um 3 pi by 4 to uh, let's say pi right this is a relevant question and definitely this is not zero right i can do the experiment count the number of times the outcome which is the angle is between 3 by 4 and uh, 3 pi by 4 and pi well definitely it will be a reasonably good number right between 0 and 1 it's definitely not zero right is this clear so whenever you talk about probabilities in these cases it's not just single turn or you cannot ask questions you can ask questions like probability of omega equal to something but the answer will be zero so you can ask questions like what is the probability that omega falls in a region or you can ask what is the probability that omega is less than or equal to is that fine okay yes, so uh, this leads to what is known as uh, um uh, the uh, definition of cumulative distribution function okay cdf cumulative distribution function okay so cdf for short keep this in mind so this is cdf okay so what is the definition uh, so cdf of a random variable x well the move, what are we assuming here we are assuming x f sorry omega fp right the sample space sigma algebra and probability measure so all these things are given that means experiment everything is given and we also have a random variable which is a map from omega to r now given that we are defining what is a distribution right so um the cdf of a random variable is defined as so how do we define this uh, well this is the notation fx of x capital fx of x which is defined as probability well um what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at all those outcomes in omega such that x of omega is less than or equal to small x okay that's how i am going to define well this x and this x are same okay so this is where now you can clearly see that see this set of all outcomes which got mapped to a number less than or equal to x is the is there in the definition of your random variable right so this belongs to f that means this set is measurable that means i can assign a number called probability therefore i would be able to define this properly right so if this event was not measurable or if this event did not belong to f then i could not have assigned probability and as a consequence of which i could not have defined what is known as cdf okay so well although this is not the reason why you want to define it define random variable the way we have defined but at least this will allow uh, us to write this definition okay any questions so what i will do is from now onwards i won't write it in its you know in this full glory 
what i will do is i'll just write this as probability of x less than or equal to x so it's understood that the probability is assigned to events and the event here is all those outcomes omega and omega such that x of omega is less than or equal to x is this fine any questions yes yeah, sir it's fine ah. so let's look at the first uh, thing so what is fx of infinity one sir one right okay. why is that it is all those outcomes which got mapped to a number less than infinity that means everything omega so probability of omega is one what is fx of minus infinity zero 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 because of null set right so what can you say about this for example fx of so uh, i'll write it like this take x1 less than x2 okay uh f of fx of x1 what can you say about these two so less than what equal. is the relation huh less than equal to less than or equal to right how do you prove this um so the probability of x2 may be uh, zero or maybe some value so it may add or it may remain the same uh um uh, can you be more precise in the sense so we can afford to use only axioms and a few other consequences that i mentioned to prove this right that's all so how do you prove this can so if we take me? x1 ha uh, so for event corresponding to x1 will contain in event corresponding to uh, x2 sir okay okay let's look at fx of x1 right it is all those mm. outcomes in omega Such that x of omega is less than or equal to x one, right? The other event would be all those omega in omega, such that x of omega is less than or equal to x two, right? Now uh, x one is smaller than x two, right? X one is smaller than x two. Therefore, all those outcomes which got mapped to a number less than a smaller number should be a smaller set, right? So that means this is contained in this. therefore probability of all omega in omega such that x of omega is less than or equal to x1 is less than or equal to probability of all those omega in omega such that x of omega is less than or equal to x2 well this proves the result right so uh, why uh, a contained in b probability of a is less than or equal to probability of b okay so this is uh, i'll just write it as a uh, sir i have a doubt yes yes sir uh, here x1 is less than x2 but we are here uh, we are saying f of x1 is less than equal to uh, f of x2 ha. good question so um, okay so let let me give you an okay i'll i'll complete this lemma and give you the explanation there is that fine yes sir yes sir okay so uh, the lemma is you have a contained in b implies probability of a is less than or equal to probability of b right how do you prove this well some so picture would have this here. so yeah yeah so b is here a is here right so i can write b as a union this part right which is nothing but a you remove b from it right so this two are disjoint right so b will okay? remove a i think sir yeah i'm sorry a. b remove yes i'm sorry you are right you are right b remove a right they are disjoint so probability of b would be what probability of a plus probability of b remove a but this probability is always greater than or equal to 0 therefore you get if i leave this you should get this simple proof okay right? okay let's go back to ayush's question so let's look at uh, an example and try to understand that right so simple example i think if you understand this head tail pretty much 
uh, it will cover a lot of things okay so x of head is 1 uh, x of uh, tail is 0 this is my random variable now let's plot for example fx of x okay okay now let's see what happens so if x is so x can take values 0 and 1 right anything to the left of this right so i'll probably use a different color anything to the left of this right so it will be 0 do you agree is that correct do you agree yes sir so if i take 0 for example if i take uh, x is equal to 0 i am looking at probability of x less than or equal to 0 so that means this zero is not included right it's excluded okay now uh, let's look at what happens at uh, zero at zero it takes one right because probability of x less than or equal to zero means it is all those outcomes which gets mapped to a number less than or equal to zero so there is one right tail which has some uh, sorry it's not one is it one no what is this value this value is probability of tail do you agree do you agree with this yes sir so now you take this value so uh, one is here okay you take maybe some other value here so i'll just um, okay so one is here and uh, i'll take uh let's say half here okay now what is the fx of half till this right what happens at 1 1 if i say probability of x less than or equal to 1 that means it is all those outcomes which got mapped to a number less than or equal to 1 definitely tail got mapped to 0 it satisfies the condition head is also 1 x of head is 1 so it's less than or equal to so it's entire omega right so this gets mapped to 1 right this is 1 do you agree now um going back to uh, um um aish question so if you look at for example uh, this is also uh, i'll just write it like this so there is a discontinuity here okay so there is a discontinuous discontinuity okay so now if you take half and one right so one is definitely greater than half but what is fx of one so uh, what is fx of one one what is fx of half p of t typically p of t is Half. This is strictly greater than, right? It's fine. Mm -hmm. But whereas, if I take, for example, one by four, what is f x of one by four? Same as the probability of t only. Yeah. Is this clear, Aish? Yes, sir. Yeah, it should be less than or equal to. Sir, uh, hello. Yes. Sir, if it Please is continuous, uh, it will not work, no, sir. No, this is also continuous here, right? So this is straight line. It's continuous. No, sir. I mean, uh, the x-axis. Uh, the when we assign a uh, random variable, mm -hmm. here we are assigning zero one. If we assign zero to one, I mean uh, real line full. Then uh, even then you can uh, you can always uh, come up with an example where there is a uh, where this is not true. Okay, so I can always have a constant thing, right? See. Okay, let me take another example quickly. Okay, so and uh, wind up for today. Example, omega is zero two pi. X of omega is omega. Okay, for all omega. Yes. In zero to two pi. Now, if you take this, <coughs> now. how do i assign uh, fx of omega so basically this is how my x fx of omega looks like okay so uh, zero for this here in straight line till one this is one 
one forever so you take these two points right x1 x2 both are same right one one it's continuously it's a continuous map and still uh, you are not uh, oh, okay. is this fine sir yes, yes. right it's not always true that uh, uh, not always true should be the case yeah okay so uh, the last po uh, property how? is Excuse yeah me, any question yes. how do, are you drawing this fx of omega like uh, how are you deciding no, 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 it's not the fx of omega it's, this is fx of x Uh, that is what this is f of x of x only ha huh? so how you, are yes, you yes what like, is the question so why is this fx of x uh -huh. the way you have drawn oh this, this is uh, i'm just i'm just drawing so for example um, if you assume that all possible angles are uh, equally likely right it turns out that this is what you get you start at 0 and at 1 this is a 2 pi you get 1 okay so it looks like that okay well there is no specific reason why i wrote like this okay but definitely it cannot be like this okay this is not possible wrong it can for example like this it is possible okay sir you why is that x of uh, omega that... is equal to omega ha uh -huh. so sir what do you mean by that sir x is a mapping from Sample point to R, but here omega is a is right. a sample point. So again, omega, what does it mean, sir? So for example, if you do this experiment, the outcome is the angle, right? Yeah. That's why capital omega oh. is between zero to two pi, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, sir, uh, well, there is no 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 reason. Uh, there, it's not required for me to map anything. It's I just can yeah. just take that itself as my random variable, right? Yeah, yeah, sir. So if the angle is three pi by four, I'll consider my random variable to be three by four, four, three pi by four. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there is a um, um, name for this. This is called monotonicity, right? Monoton. It's increasing. There is one more. I'll uh, write that f x of x is right. continuous okay can somebody tell me what is right continuity hmm anyone okay rishab can you tell me so you said you are interested in math so that's why i'm asking you hello um, hello sir yeah Can you tell me what is right continuity? Right, right continuity means left not exist. Only right limits we change. Okay. Hello. Okay. So uh, somebody can refine that. Maybe Sumit, since you are from math background, so can you tell me? Yeah, sir. Actually, yes, sir. We just uh, take uh, suppose uh, f of x something hmm. a plus zero, and then we have to prove that it it equal to the f of a only. means we just approach mm -hmm. from the right side to the point of interest and we yeah. get so we take a sequence value. of points from yeah. the right of the point a if f of x n converges to f of a particularly from the right then um, we say that it's right continuous right well uh, you can clearly see here from here um, in one of the examples right if you come from the right this is con there is continuity but if you come from the left for example if you take a sequence xn converging to 1 from let's say uh, xn is always greater than 0 then f of xn f of x xn would be always p of t right but suddenly f of x of 1 would be 1 right so there is a sudden jump so it's it's not continuous so the limit of this since f x of xn is equal to p of t for all n limit also will be p of t but fx of 1 would be 1 so there is a discontinuity right it's not left continuous it's only right continuous is that fine so we will prove that uh, particular statement in the next class so we will see why is it uh, left continuous uh, sorry right continuous and uh, well there are examples where it's um, continuous okay complete you know it's both left and right continuous therefore it is continuous okay so in the next class we'll continue with a few more elementary things and hopefully 
next mid next week uh, we will slightly go up the ladder meaning we look at more complicated uh, uh, scenarios this is almost like undergrad uh, but next week onwards we will go up the ladder okay so next month onwards it will be much more uh, i would say tougher hmm? okay okay sir yeah. yeah okay if there are no questions i'll we will end the uh, class here is that fine yes sir so uh, savan yes. uh, we can uh, give the first set of homework so um, maybe we will have a meeting sometime during this uh, tomorrow day after I'll, i'll let you know so we will have we will post the first set of homework problem we can submit huh? okay yes sir okay okay um see you then thanks bye okay thank you sir bye bye, bye.